Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm making a delicious and classic sourdough bread that you can easily bake at home. This recipe is my favorite and the only one you need. The tangy flavor and chewy structure of the sourdough make it truly special. It is very simple and if you repeat after me, your first loaf will be perfect, I promise. Baking sourdough is not just about the end result, but also about the process and the satisfaction of creating something from scratch. Now, let's get started. Before you begin, make sure to feed your sourdough starter about 6 hours before you plan to bake. Combine 25 grams of starter, 50 grams of filter water and 50 grams of unbleached all-purpose flour. It should be active and have triple in size by the time you're ready to start. I usually fit it in the early morning or late at night before I go to bed. In a large mixing bowl, combine 260 grams of water with 100 grams of active sourdough starter. You can see the sourdough starter is floating, which is called the float test. This shows that it's good for baking. Mix the water and sourdough starter until then fully combined. Stir the mixture gently but thoroughly, ensuring the starter is evenly distributed in the water. Next, add 9 grams of kosher salt and mix it well. The salt enhances the flavor and helps control the fermentation process. Gradually add 400 grams of bread flour, starting to mix it with a spoon. When it becomes hard to mix, use your hands. Knead until no dry flour remains. You don't need to knead it much, just combine the ingredients. The dough will be sticky at this stage, which is perfectly normal. Cover the bowl with a clean kitchen towel or plastic wrap and let the dough rest for 10 minutes. This rest period is known as atalis, which helps with gluten development, making the dough easier to work with. After the rest, wet your hands and knead the dough in the bowl as shown in the video. First, stretch a portion of the dough, then fold it back down over itself. Turn the bowl slightly and repeat the process. After, I use the slap technique. Lift the dough, then slap it back into the bowl and fold it over itself. Continue this for several minutes until it passes the gluten window test. This means when you stretch a small piece of dough, it should form a thin, translucent membrane without tearing. When you finish, cover the bowl and let it rest for 30 minutes at room temperature. After the rest, spray a working surface with water and wet your hands. Perform a stretch and fold as shown in the video. First, you need to stretch the dough into a rectangle. Then fold one side of the rectangle over to the middle. Then the other side over the first fold. Next, fold the right side near the middle. Then fold the left side near the top fold. Finally, fold the dough in half again. This technique helps strengthen the dough and develop the gluten network. Cover the dough and let it ferment at room temperature for about 5-6 hours. The dough should approximately double in size and show bubbles on the surface, indicating active fermentation. When your dough is ready, sprinkle it with rice flour or whole wheat flour. I'm using whole wheat flour. Also sprinkle a working surface and gently remove the dough from the bowl. Shape the dough into a loaf as shown in the video without deflating it too much. Our goal is to tighten it to let it perfectly grow during baking. First gently flatten the dough into a rough rectangle. Fold the bottom side of the dough toward the center. For the left side to the middle. Then fold the right side over the left. Fold the top side to the middle. Fold the top right corner to the middle then the top left corner to the middle. Repeat this process with all the sides to tighten the dough. After folding, gently roll the dough into a loaf, creating surface tension on top and then seal the sides, as shown on the video.
Place the shaped dough seam set up in a well-floured bonnet on basket or a bowl lined with a flower towel. Optionally, pinch the seam once more to ensure it is tightly sealed. This helps the dough maintain its shape and prevents it from spreading out too much during the final proof. Do not cover it and let it rest at room temperature for one hour. After this rest, let it rest overnight in the fridge. This cold proofing allows the flavors to develop further and makes the dough easier to handle. Preheat your oven with a Dutch oven inside to 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 260 degrees Celsius. When your oven is hot, Turn the dough out onto a piece of parchment paper. Sprinkle it generously with whole wheat or rice flour. Score the top of the dough with a sharp knife or razor blade to allow for expansion during baking. To score the dough, hold the plate at a slight angle and make a few cuts. The third cut I make under the skin of the bread, which helps create a beautiful ear. Optionally, you can make some design to add a decorative touch to your loaf. Place the dough into the preheated Dutch oven, cover with the lid and bake covered for 15 minutes. Then remove the lid. Optionally, you can score the ear one more time to let the bread grow more. After that, reduce the temperature to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Celsius and continue baking until the bread is golden brown, approximately 15 more minutes depending on your oven. And there you have it, fresh homemade sourdough bread. Take the bread out and let it cool down before cutting. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Happy baking!